in today's video, we're going to be painting up Car Drakkar from Reaper Miniatures. So just before we start getting some painting in here, just some things I want to tell you. I've just placed some uh, basing material on here, which is just sand from my driveway. Give it a bit of a clean up and then prime the whole lot. And then what we're going to do is start off with some ultramarine blue. So once we've got all that, we want to place on our ultramarine blue. And we're going to be placing it on everywhere where we can see his uh, scales and his skin, everything like that. We want to be covering the whole lot in the ultramarine blue. Now, uh, he does have a lot of uh, spikes and... Uh, bits of scales and stuff like that so it's going to be a little bit hard to get all that paint in there so we want to make sure we thin down our paint so it can run smoothly into those areas now it will take a couple of coats to do this especially with how uh, spiky and pointy he is so don't be afraid if it takes a little while to get all this skin done and now with all his scales complete and his skin we're going to come in now with some crystal blue and for the crystal blue here what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be dry brushing it over top of our scales so we can really pick those out nicely here um, giving it a very sort of light quick fast dry brush um, we also want to be making sure we apply it to everywhere as well so we catch all those uh, raised areas even on the the parts of his body where you might not think there is a lot we want to make sure we get it over everywhere so we get a consistent look over the whole miniature and then once we have all that complete what we're going to be doing is coming in with some blue tone ink here and we're going to give all of our skin a wash so I want to do this all uh, now so we can really get into those uh, colors on those scales and stuff like that because it's going to be a little bit harder to especially apply a wash uh, a little bit later on um, when we have all those other colors on here since he's got so many scales and so many parts that overlap one another. So applying it now is going to be the better option as well as I want to do a little bit more work on his skin as well and this is just going to help tie everything together. Okay, so now we've got... Uh, wash all completely dry we're going to come in now with some crystal blue again and this time instead of uh, dry brushing over the area what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be just grabbing my paintbrush and then placing a dot and covering over each one of those little scales individually now this is going to take quite a while to do um, but it's going to give off a really nice effect in the end and remember to just avoid all those cracks in between and um, you should be fine and as well we also want to come down onto those raised areas of the muscle that we can see and as abs that are really sticking out we want to pick out all those real high spots and just leave the other parts alone so we've got a real good effect of uh, having our highlights really highlighted up okay so now we have all those parts picked out uh, and it was quite a long process we're going to come in now with electric blue which is uh, even lighter blue and what I'm going to be doing again is I'm going to be going over all those areas, but this time I'm just basically placing a little dot in one of the corners or an area where I feel like it would be necessary. So I'm not covering over everything, I'm just placing little dots everywhere. Now, one area that is definitely time consuming while doing this is uh, his tail, because eventually the, the what do you call it, the, the sculpted um, skin parts that we have here, nice and big and deep that we can see here, are very, very shallow and not very visible on the tail so it's a lot of uh, guesswork and just dotting it in and applying over all those areas so don't for, be afraid to do that or if you want to just leave the tail entirely but I want to go for that little bit of an extra mile and really make all the skin stand out everywhere and of course don't forget to go back over the the high points of the muscles as well to make them stand out even more with uh, those really high lights and blue areas. Okay, so now with all that done, we have completed all of his uh, scales. We can now move on to just painting his eye. And to do that, we're just using a little bit of Avalon Sunset just to come in and pick out just the little dot he's got on his eyes. Now, I can't really put in a nice eye pupil in here because it's so small. It's just enough to have that dot of yellow. And that yellow is going to really stick out amongst all that blue and make those eyes really pop on the miniature. So once we've picked out his eye, what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some dragon red. And the dragon red, we're going to be placing on his armor. I'm not going to go with uh, metal armor this time. I want it to be uh, big, bright, and colorful. So I'm going to give him some red armor. Um, now this is going to take a few layers, especially since we've got some really uh, flat areas. And red paint is notoriously hard to cover over big, flat areas. So it is definitely going to take a couple of... Uh, 
thin down coats to do this i think in total it took me about four coats to cover this properly so you couldn't uh, see any of the streak marks and stuff like that over there so just keep that in mind if you want to do it red you could easily switch to another color or just make it a metallic um, but i want to go the extra mile and i never really do anything other than uh metal armor so giving a nice colored armor i think is just going to be a, something different for me to do as well so of course don't forget to do all those little other areas like as uh, knee pads as um arm guards and stuff like that as well okay now with all his red armor complete what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some charred brown and with the charred brown we're going to be using to uh, paint all of the leather straps he has on him now he only has a few uh, just holding his armor together so uh, just be careful to look out and we also want to paint our uh, sword handle as well the same brown just to tie it all together um, now just be a little bit careful that there is some um, straps just underneath his uh, armpits there as well so be really careful in there when you're doing that and as you can see uh the camera is super out of focus so i can get into all those detailed areas <laughs> so i'll try to get it as much as i can and of course don't forget the inside of the shield too okay so with all that leather working done and woodworking we're going to come in now with some red tone and the red tone we want to be applying everywhere that we've got red on of course to uh, darken it down and add a bit more vibrancy to that red and it's going to be good for bringing out all the little details we've got on here because there is actually um a few bits of details uh, carved into the armor and as well as you can see on the shield here we've got some nice sort of engravings in there so bringing all those out with the red tone is going to do a nice job of that uh, rather than uh, the agrax earthshade and stuff which i usually use because i want his armor to be nice and pristine okay so once his red wash is complete we're going to come in now with some wizard orb and wizard orb is a very uh, bluish green and I'm going to be using that to be just painting up as a little bit of cloth he has on him here. It's just a little bit here, just underneath his sort of armored plated skirt. And he has some just on uh, the back of him where the uh, cloth carries on. So I want to make sure we get that in there. And it's going to be a nice uh, eye-catching color in those areas. And it's a good balance on there to just add a bit of visual interest in there too. And you see, um, struggling to keep it in the camera lens there. So... Just be mindful that there is some there as well. Okay, so now we have that cloth all painted up. We're going to come in now with some gunmetal. And, of course, the gunmetal we're going to be painting everywhere that's metallic. So we're going to be painting up the blade of the sword. Uh, that little bit of uh, skirt army has, it's all armoured up. Or at least that's the way I'm interpreting it, is it's all armoured up. I'm going to be painting the rim of a shield. And my camera's out of uh, focus again, so you can't really see anything I'm painting other than... Uh, the bottom of the <laughs> the base there um, but I'm just going over everywhere that I want the metal to be now I am painting the outside of the shield like I said before but I'm just going to be leaving the inside of the shield I'm actually going to be doing that a different color okay so with all that painted up what we're going to do now is come in with some greedy gold and the greedy gold we're going to be using uh, for the other areas that I want the metallics to be so we want uh, just this part of the sword here which has this uh, sort of really ornate design on it we want to make sure we get that covering uh, nice and even there i'm also going to be doing the end of the sword really giving that a good covering as well and uh, like i said before um, we want to make sure we uh, get the other places and i'm going to be just adding a golden trim to uh, parts of his armor here and all the the parts that he has uh, sort of a little bit of edit added detail sorry about that um just to give it a bit more visual interest and uh, making it look like he's a more important uh, person so just going around and adding a bit of gold trim to all these other sorts of places is really going to make him pop on the table as well and like i said before i want to be painting the uh, inside sort of filigree design that he has on the shield as well i want to be doing that in gold too okay so now we've got all those golden areas complete and he's all shiny ready for the battlefield we're going to come in now with some ivory and with the ivory all i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be picking out his teeth that he's got uh, sculpted in here now this is very fine uh, detail work it's a very very small area but just coming in and sort of just brushing it over top sort of just catching on the top sort of like doing a mini dry brush uh, to just catch those little bits of detail and as well as that i'm also going to be just painting up the the one horn he has on his face as well i want that to stand out apart from the rest of the scales i want it to read as a horn not just another scale so going in with the ivory and doing that too okay so now with his teeth and horns picked out we're going to come in now with some black and with the black all we're going to be doing is picking out his claws 
and the only ones we can really see on the miniature is the ones on his feet so giving them a good covering uh, really making sure we're not painting over anywhere that we've already painted before because black is going to be a hard color to clean up at this point so just not being afraid and really getting in between those toes okay with all that done what we're going to be doing now is coming in with some dirt spatter and the dirt spatter we're just going to be applying over all over the base giving a really good uh coverage here we want to make sure we get in between all those gaps and all the sand and the rocks that i've got on there so the whole thing is painted because you don't want to see any little white dots anywhere so that's why i thin the paint down a little bit more than usual so it really runs into those cracks okay now we have our base painted up what i'm going to be doing now is coming in with some non oil and for the non oil i'm just going to be placing over our metallic areas now i'm only going to be placing it over our silver metallic areas not our gold metallic areas and we'll be doing that in a different wash so uh, to keep that in mind now you could easily place this over top of the um, gold areas as well but um, i want that to stand out uh, a little bit different so using a different wash for that is going to help sell that effect so just applying it everywhere that we've got our silver metallics and i'm also just applying it over our cloth as well okay so now with all that steel all nice and shaded up we're going to come in now with some agrax earth shade and our Agrax Earthshade, we want to be placing over the entirety of the base and really giving that a nice uh, deepened effect with all, in all those cracks and uh, places where there's a little bits of gaps and there. It's going to really look nice uh, with this wash in there to really bring out all those little tiny rocks and stones we've got on that base. Okay, so while I've got that wash drying, I'm not going to be focusing on the uh, base here for a bit so I can start doing some other areas. Now, I would advise that you... Uh, make sure it's completely dry before you start the next part but i'm um, sort of getting a bit quick uh, low on time here so i'm going to be just coming in now with the reichland flesh shade like i showed you just before and i'm going to be placing that over top of uh, all the gold areas i really like the effect that the reichland flesh shade gives off on gold it really does make it look like a really true bright shining gold so just going everywhere over those golden areas for this okay so once all those washes are dry what i'm going to do is come in now with some chainmail silver and all i'm going to be doing is picking out those high points and where the sun would naturally hit onto those metallic areas now i'm also going to be doing the same thing with the gold um, but i lost the footage of me doing the gold so it's just going to be me doing the uh, silver highlights here but just know it's pretty much exactly the same just picking out those high points on there now uh, once this is all complete your miniature is done now i'm going to be uh, giving them a, a base here so if you want to stick around and check out what i did with the base and um, see all that type of stuff just stick around for a few more minutes and you'll get to see what it came out like With all that done and completed, we have finished painting up Car Dracar from Reaper Miniatures. And as you can see, by just adding in those extra bits of detail, like picking out each one of those scales and going with uh, those really high highlights and going in with a different color other than just going with a metallic, I went with um, really bright uh, red in there and just giving some color to the miniature. He's a real standout piece on the table. And it's He's quite a big miniature. He'll be a nice, big, important piece to any game that you play. So I hope this has been helpful for you guys, whether you want to follow along or you just enjoy me painting up some cool miniatures. So I'd like to thank you all again for watching, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.